A foreign buyer just got smashed with a $328,000 fine from the Canadian government for trying to avoid BC's foreign buyer tax. And the worst part of that is they're now Canadian. And that actually might have been what got them caught. But with more than 1 million new bodies coming into the country in the last 12 months and immigration targets only ramping up, myself and my team are continuously receiving calls these days from people new to Canada that want to buy a home. And in fact, as recently as this last spring, 90% of our buyers were PRs and not Canadian citizens. So if you are new to Canada, specifically if you are trying to buy a home in British Columbia, you are going to want to watch this video all the way to the end because it could save you from being found guilty of tax avoidance by the Canada Revenue Agency. But first, really quick, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel if you too would like to stay up to date on Canadian real estate. And speaking of the CRA bringing the hammer down, if you don't mind, it would mean a lot if you could crack down on the like button right now for the YouTube algorithm. And since this video then has the potential to save you $328,000 in tax, I'm gonna set a goal on this video to reach 328 likes. So thanks for clicking and now onto the video. And why this is so important is because of how many people are new to Canada. And when you are new to Canada, you want to become Canadian by doing Canadian things. Like you start off with your first ever cup of Tim Hortons, then you put your kids in hockey, and step three is, yep, you guessed it, it's time to invest in real estate. But you have to be careful how you do this because in 2016, the government here in BC brought in a foreign buyer's tax of 15% to try to either stop investors coming from overseas or at least cash in on their purchases. Then in 2018, a new government increased that tax to 20%. And earlier this year, the federal government said no foreign buyers could buy Canadian real estate at all. Unless, of course, you met one of the requirements on the very long list of exceptions. But more and more often, as I said, I'm getting calls from people that don't know if they're exempt or not. For example, if you're here on a temporary work permit, you can still buy. This is great because often new Canadians are hired here by Canadian companies or foreign companies, maybe like Google or Facebook, and they're successfully given a work permit. And then when these new workers go to buy a house, the question isn't, are they allowed to buy? Because it looks like they probably are. The real question is, do they then have to pay the foreign buyer tax? And the answer to that is no, they don't have to pay the tax unless, of course, the government says they do have to pay the tax. Because working through this with many potential clients who are here on some sort of visa or other exemption on the list, we have never, ever, ever yet been told 100% that the tax will be waived. And that's even after checking with lawyers, accountants, the provincial nominee program, and of course, the CRA. But buyers are creative and often they will find ways to get around these issues. For example, one of the buyers that I know was hit with a $328,000 fine, well, they got whacked and it went a little bit like this. See, if you are a citizen, a PR, a nominee, or here on a work permit and your spouse or partner you might be buying the property with is none of those, then you might be tempted to try and take advantage of something called tenants in common. You see, there are two ways to register your title in BC when you have more than one owner. The first is called joint tenancy, where both property owners own the property 100% jointly. This is how most married couples will register their title. And that's because if one of them passes away, the property just easily transfers 100% into the surviving spouse's name. Or second, you could register as tenants in common. This is where there is a defined percentage of the property owned. Business partners might register a property as 50-50 or whatever percentage that they decide. But commonly when first-time home buyers need a co-signer like mom and dad, well, they might register on the property as 1% ownership. So the first-time buyer owns 99% of the property and lives in that property as their principal residence. And mom and dad are just on the title to guarantee the loan. Another advantage of this is that if that first-time buyer qualifies for the first-time home buyer property transfer tax exemption, they can successfully avoid 99% of the tax as the purpose of the parents being an owner 
at 1% is to strictly guarantee the loan, and they won't be living there or using the property for their own use. But as I said, buyers are creative, and I'm assuming that the buyer that got hit with the foreign buyer tax after the fact, well, their situation may have gone a little bit like this. First off, let's assume they were a married couple or possibly a parent and child. One of them was a citizen, permanent resident, nominee, or here on a work permit. The other was not, but still wanted to live here and of course buy real estate. So they bought the property and put the property 99% in the name of the owner that could legally buy here and avoid the tax. And then registered the property only 1% in the name of the person who was unable to avoid this foreign buyer tax. Meaning that they would only have to pay 20% of 1% of the purchase price, reducing their total tax bill by a lot. But I do know that they were hit with a $328,000 fine from the government. Meaning that if we assume that fine was 20% of the overall purchase price because the buyer bought since 2018, but before 2023, that they likely ended up buying a home for about $1.65 million. And of course they paid the full property transfer tax, but only paid an estimated $3,280 of the foreign buyer tax and therefore saving themselves over $300,000 and outsmarting the Canadian government. Or so they thought. But it sounds like to me they made one major misstep in their tax fraud. Because that's what this is, right? This was nothing else but tax fraud. You see, after the 1% owner, or we'll call them the second buyer, became exempt from the tax, either becoming a permanent resident or a Canadian citizen. Well, yeah, after they received those designations a number of years later from the government, both buyers then applied to have the property changed from tenants in common to joint tenancy, signaling to the tax man that maybe, just maybe, these buyers never actually used the property in the 99 to 1% manner of which they claimed. And they simply did the paperwork in this way to avoid the tax. And indeed, the change on title seemed to have triggered some sort of audit on the purchase file. And wouldn't you know it, now the owner, or let's call them owners, have to come up with the rest of the money. So if you are in this situation and you are married to someone who is a non-resident and not exempt from the tax, and you are thinking about buying real estate here in BC, or for that matter right now across the entire country, my thoughts are that you just simply shouldn't. Because even if you think you're doing everything right, or if you're trying to take advantage of what you think is a tax loophole, even the slightest interpretation of the government that says you maybe do owe that tax anyway, well, you will probably owe that tax anyway. Welcome to Canada. We pay a lot of tax. And you pay more because you're not Canadian. And now that I'm actually thinking this all the way through, I assume that this probably actually wasn't the CRA itself that smashed these guys. Because the foreign buyer tax here in BC is provincial. And as we all know, housing isn't a primary federal responsibility. And I'm assuming that the province is the one that levied the tax. But if you are new to Canada and you do legally qualify to buy a property and you want to live in my market of Surrey or the Fraser Valley, well, you can book a call with me right now using the link in the description below at a time that works best for you. Please subscribe, click the like button 328 times, and we'll see you in a couple of days.